Oh, thank you, everyone, and good afternoon. I'm the last one today. Um, today, I'm going to obviously talk about pop-up shops. Um, are any of you in the audience thinking of opening a pop-up shop or have a pop-up shop? Oh, is that? Oh, <laughs> very good. Well, I'm going to take oh half and half there. I'm going to take you through the process of opening your pop-up shop. In fact, any of you who are exhibitors, in fact, you have a pop-up shop. So. Um, this is a way of engaging your customers, and I'm going to show you some basic um, visual merchandising kind of tools to work with. So, start with this. So, benefits of a pop-up shop. So, engaging customers offline. So, the thing is, like all of us, we're human, and I do think we need to kind of touch and feel, and it's so much better to actually see a product rather than, um, than have it online. I was here at the last fair and I was chatting to one of the exhibitors who sold really funky umbrellas, which actually are foolproof. Um, I wouldn't have known that online. I might have read it, but I wouldn't have been convinced. But because I met him, he was able to explain about his product and I actually ended up you know, buying one. Um, so that's really important to, to have that kind of connection and to create the kind of get it while you can. Um, I know myself, I, I like to buy things there and then. I don't particularly want to wait to buy things online, so that's another good op opportunity. So educating new customers. Again, you might have a product where you really need to talk to people and explain the DNA of that product, especially if it's your own design, how it's made, um, the process that goes into it. The next one is go where the customers are. So you perhaps work, you know, have an a, a online business, but you want to actually physically get it out to your customers and go where they are. And generate brand awareness as well, to make them aware of your brand. So the next one. So that I would recommend anyone who's thinking of opening a pop-up shop to actually find the right location. If you go to the location and s what, see kind of the... P the p um, uh, customers, uh, their behaviour, um, what kind of um, high street is it? Could you imagine yourself in that, in that particular high street? Uh, and customer demographics, that's really important. I would suggest anyone who's opening a pop-up shop to think about all of these things. Perhaps do a mood board, just imagine like who's my customer, where I would be locate my shop, all of these information, as much information as possible. I think we're all guilty of being quite channeled and just focusing on what we're doing and not looking at other successful businesses. You see, I see lots of pop-up no coffee shops. Some, for some reason, some do really well and others don't. You can tell the ones that have done their research and really understand who their customer is. So types of um, location for pop-up shops. So we have a store within a store. Again, this all depends on your brand. Um, to, to really look at that environment, think, would my brand or would, my, would, would that fit into that environment? And a gallery or event space, um, shopping, uh, uh, shopping centres and shopping malls, or vacant street retail shops, which I think a lot of sh uh, high streets now have lots of spaces. Um, and I think it's somewhere with great opportunities at the moment, but the thing is to get it right from the very start. I think it's so important from the very, very beginning to really understand your customer and get the actual visual side absolutely right because people have known you offline, but when, they get to when you kind of physically create a store, it's got to be right um, because that's the, that's the kind of your last, your kind of chance to expose yourself. So what kind of pop-up shops do I want to create? So I'm gonna have a gift shop, um, accessory, is it gonna be very techy, um, homeware, toy shop? So really, really stick to kind of what kind of shop you're going to open. I think the worst thing to do is to start with one thing and then what we call flip-flop and then change your mind and go on to something else. So really be clear of what your image of what you want. As I say, you've got your mood board, your information and really build on that. So uh, signage is very important. So the logo for your pop-up shop, make sure that that really relates to your product. So it's no use having a, 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 a sign and it has no relation whatsoever. Really think about the style, kind of very trendy, is it very, um, if it's a vintage store, all of the, these things, again, all have to come together to create the perfect shop. 
So what style of pop-up shop do I want to create? So you think, well, do I want it kind of trendy, very trendy looking store, uh, a vintage store, um, classic, quirky, or minimalist, or am I going to have a pop-up shop on the move? So really kind of have that very, very, very clear vision. So the product. So unless it's a product which is actually your own, your own brand, when you're here at the fair, it's very good practice to actually buy product which um, buy stories. This makes it a lot easier when it comes to presenting within your store. So for example, say it, the trend is kind of pastel colours. Think about those colours. Think about stories. How would this look in my pop-up shop? Um, rather than have little bits of everything. It's good to actually have a clear vision of exactly what you want with that customer in mind. So window, your window checklist. So if you're opening a shop, the things that you will actually need on, and to look out for as well when you, when you, kind of, uh, when you want to, to rent your shop. Think about the, um, the windows or the interior of the store. Is it kind of, do you have wooden or concrete walls? Um, removable floor panels. Removable floor panels would be, if you don't have any flooring, think about creating a panel which you can cover and change. Um, a ceiling grid system is very good. Again, that's just a piece of uh, uh, metal gridding that you would attach to the ceiling. And then this allows you to suspend things. It gives you more flexibility within your window. Um, secure door or close back window. If your shop is kind of quite uh, very kind of minimalist, you might think, yeah, I don't need a back to my window. Or you might want to create a backing, depending on what your product is. Um, and how high is my window? Is it very high? Is it low? You're working with a customer, the, the focal point. So it has to be eye level to the customer. So the essential toolbox. So I'd, for anyone who's opening a, a shop to have this toolbox. So uh, staple guns, nylon. So nylon would be like fishing wire to use this to kind of work your window. Uh, scissors, hammers, an array of things here. And things like pins. We have pin, uh, dress, there's dressmaker pins, but we have pins which we use in display, which are a meter, uh, a meter, <laughs> an inch or like half inch nails, which are much stronger, which are really good to work with. All of these things you, a trained visual merchandiser would normally have. An elevation might be needed. Um, th again, these blocks, if you have these blocks made, one which is perhaps a meter, um, half a meter, different sizes, this allows you much more flexibility in your window. Plus these can be covered, um, can be painted, a different texture depending on your merchandise. Bridges on the side, these bridges, you can buy these in lots of uh, uh, display stores, which are just plexiglass blocks, which again allow you to, to put your display together. So ideas, have ideas when it comes to opening a shop. What kind of, what kind of window am I going to, to open my pop-up shop with? So I think Valentine's. It's not always good to think of, to use, because it's Valentine's, don't necessarily use red. If your merchandise is all pastel colours, soft colours, think about I'm going to actually have hearts or whatever in those colours. Because what happens if you have a window which is all, say, pastel colours, and then you put a bright red heart in, what would happen? Your eye goes straight to that. So it's a way of having that kind of harmony within your window. Um, so you think um, spring, Easter, um, I found some old lampshades or I have some old frames. All these things for prop. Think about props, what you would use in your window. Um, new pattern products. I'm going to put lots of hanging cups and saucers or something like that to, to kind of tie those colours colors in. So the next one, what style of dressing should I apply? So I'm going to talk about two different styles of dressing. One is pyramid and the other one is repetition. And this depends on your brand. So applying the right style for your brand. So this one here is you have your selection of ceramics that perhaps you've just bought from the fair. And you think you've got your blocks. So you place your blocks uh, in a pyramid so, so once you've placed the blocks, you can't really go wrong because this is the kind of the shape you want to create. Um, and think about painting the blocks. Just paint them 
different colours to, to complement the merchandise. And then this allows the customer to see everything very quickly because you have about two seconds to catch a customer's attention. If I was to take this product and spread it all out, it takes a long time for you to see every single piece. It's like all of you here, it would take me a long time to look at all of you individually, whereas if I gather you all and group you, I'm more liable to see everyone much more quicker. So that you have to rely on. So you catch the customer's attention and hopefully then they'll come into your shop. So I need a cost-effective prop. So you think you've got your blocks, you've got your product. What can I use? Something cheap, something, something which creates a kind of backing of my window. So this is just simple ribbons, but again, choose the colours of your merchandise. Make sure all the colours work together. When it comes to things like ticketing, so often I see a window which may be pastel colours and then someone puts a fuchsia pink sticker in the window with a price. So what happens there is your eye goes straight to that bright coloured sticker. It's like if one of you in the audience were wearing a fuchsia pink big brooch, I'd probably see that rather than what you're else you're wearing. So it's a way of training the eye to see things quickly. So the same applies to, um, this same applies to if you have an accessory wind, you're opening an accessory store. Think about, um, I wouldn't advise anyone to buy mannequins unless you're prepared to pay more money, a lot more money. You can buy mannequins quite cheaply, um, but mannequins are quite hard to dress. Um, you've got to get it absolutely right first time. I think they're, um, you're better off having stockmans. These stockmans are very easy to dress. Um, and when it comes to dressing, rather than just use one scarf, one bag, and one belt, think about layering. Think about, I'm going to have three scarves, and I'm going to have three belts, and a couple of bags. Really layer it so it's a lot of product, not just, not just one uh, piece. And anything that you put into your window, make sure it's pressed beautifully. Even scarves, everything has to be absolutely pristine. Um, and again, with this window here, just used a couple of blocks as well. Again, coloured, painted or textured in the same uh, colour as your, your merchandise. So searching for props. You might think, well, I don't have old frames and I don't have this, I don't have that. I think it's really good practice to uh, go to like, car boot sales, recycling centres, charity shops to gather um, your props. For example, if you found an old bicycle, Think about, well, my shop is very, um, I've got lots of bright colours. Think, well, I'm going to spray the bike a bright colour. Or you could perhaps wrap it in a fabric, decoupage it. Just treat it, make it like a still life rather than looking like a bicycle. Also, if you've got jewellery, it's quite hard to display. Think you've got the jewellery pop-up shop. Think about old books. Old books, take books apart with the pages. That's another thing you could use. Uh, for menswear, you think I've got lots of old cameras that I found. Use the old cameras for props. Old keys, um, old typewriter, all these things. I, I often see a lot of really good things at car boot sales, like an old typewriter. I think I'm going to spray that up or I'm going to have it as it is with the books for my uh, jewellery window. Kites, kites can very easily be made. If you have a lot of pattern, a new pattern in your window that you want to kind of bring alive, Think about adding a complementary pattern and making kites. Kites can very easily be made and you've got your grid system. You could suspend those from the ceiling to, to make your window more attractive. So when you do this with your pop-up shop, any kind of props or any window that you put into your pop-up shop is something you have to continue because this is your reputation. However you start, you have to continue. It's no good opening a shop with lovely windows and then a few weeks later, think, oh, no, I won't bother. You've got to keep that going because actually the general public do notice things. People say they don't, but they do. I've seen so many shops, pop-up shops open. It's their reputation on the line and they've opened it and it's bad quality. No thought's gone into it. And it's quite a disappointment, especially if you, you've been buying offline and suddenly you see the physical side. It's something you've got to really, really get it right the first time. So however you start make sure you continue with that. It's a little bit like our high street. Some of our stores, the better ones, say, um, say Harvey Nichols, for instance, who do wacky wild windows, if they were to suddenly change and do something completely different, we would all notice. If Zara 
for instance, changed their dressing, didn't have nice mannequin, didn't have wigs make up, and started buying cheap mannequins, we would notice that. So it's exactly the same with pop-up shops. So this, what style to um, dressing to apply when it comes to perhaps more kind of techy, more kind of trendy piece? So example, if you've got a, a pop-up shop, which is perhaps your own design, your own ceramics, you would actually use perhaps repetition form of dressing, which is when you have like sets of three, like, like three blocks, three pots, that's three chairs, something like that. So it's very, very much more structured because that complements your brand. You wouldn't apply this if it was something, say, uh, a vintage shop or something like that. You would actually just apply this, say, really look at your brand and actually know and look at other, other um, stores as well, uh, actual stores, what they're doing. So I need a cost-effective prop, so think about what would I use. I mean, this is lots of cutler suspended um, forks, for example. Again, just coming straight down from your grid system, wired, because it's wired, you won't be able to see it, so it's like just floating effect, having these. And with the blocks as well, think about with the blocks, I'm going to, like, on this one here, just actually print, perhaps, uh, images on those blocks as well to endorse the product. And again, repetition, again, for uh, fashion. So again, you'd have three, three stop runs in a row, very structured. So another alternative are vinyls. Vinyl stickers are uh, cost-effective, a good way of, especially if your pop-up shop is just for a very short time, if you've only got it for a few months, this is quite a good way of uh, creating impact. Yes. So they're quite, as I say, they're they're not expensive, they're a good form of, uh, again, think about colours and think about the shape, what you're going to do, so it represents your, your brand. So inside your pop-up shop, so keeping the customer engaged. So it's no good having fantastic windows that you've done a great job and then when you walk inside the shop, uh, it's just bombarded with merchandise and it's not well laid out. Uh, things like the cash desk, often I see uh, a cash desk is put close to the window. If it's an open back window, make sure you can't see behind the cash desk. Make sure there is a good view. It's a little bit like going to restaurants. I've been to a restaurant recently, a very nice restaurant, but the seat we had, I could see behind the bar. So if you're going to a high-end restaurant, you should not be able to, ha you, that shouldn't happen. So within your shop, you look at every single angle, what exactly what the customer will see from outside. The cash desks are better in a corner, to halfway or at the back, so you can't see behind, this, behind the scenes. So this is an example of uh, a pop-up shop, which is the um, University of the Arts um, uh, in Surrey. Uh, they only had the pop-up shop for a short while, but again, they've created focal points within the shop. The one here with the table and the, and the pictures. Everything is, you get to see all the merchandise quite quickly. And things like putting a plant or flowers to complement that. I say this is a very, very short lived, just for, it's only in for a few weeks. The walls are white because obviously they are, it's not a long term pop up shop. And the jewelry just put on slate, very, very simple. And pictures, it's really important to always work with the eye level. I mean, I had an aunt once, she'd go to her house, she'd have a picture up here and a picture up there. and and nothing came together. So if you, even in your home, just bring things together. Everything is about the eye level. So if you have a group of pictures, you start off with a large one, then the next one, the next one. So you have that kind of shape. So your eye travels all the way along and you get to see everything quickly. So all these things are the same thing they've done here. They've got the table, the scarves, the pictures. So everything is framed and you see everything very, um, very quickly. Another way is, you might say to me, well, I've got a huge shop, what do I do with it? Um, I need to, to I've, got, uh, I've got homeware, I've got ceramics, and I've got jewelry for my pop-up shop. How do I, how do I, um, how do I kind of create a kind of uh, a look? The, a really good thing to do is to create um, screens. So in this one here, the screen is just made from uh, two pieces of dowel, top and bottom, with the strings in between, so this creates a kind of barrier. 
So if you stand at the front of your shop and create three areas, so it zigzags kind of through the store. Another thing to do, you think, well, I've got all these cushions, ceramics, old ladders, think about painting them, find an old chest of drawers to paint, but create these pockets within the store. Another really, really good thing I think uh, would be very good investment would be to have these pegboards. These boards here, you can the shelves can be adjusted however you want them, but also they, these all could also be painted and covered and textured. If you go to anthropology, next time you go to anthropology, which there's quite a lot around the country, look at these panels. They have them through their store. And every time they have new product, they treat the wall or they paint the wall to complement that product. They're really flexible and it saves you painting the whole shop. You can literally over the, in one evening, you can just strip everything off, paint it, ready for your next, next new collection. And things like old doors, if you've got like a vintage store, the old doors, lots of things you do can do to texture your walls. If you've got a, um, within your pop-up shop, if there's a lovely kind of brick wall, use that texture and put it with something which obviously complements that, that look. This one here for, um, this is an example here, using the shelving system, this is for Terence Conran, the shelving system they used with the plants. This creates, again, interest throughout the store. And colour, how we, are, we gravitate towards colour. So they've very strategically placed the blue at the front part and also the back. So that creates that lovely sense of depth. Another thing is the bottom image is an actual panel. If you actually put panels within the store, that gives you actually an extra space for your merchandise as well. So it's like creating little kind of pockets within the shop. And that keeps the customer engaged and, you know, and allows you to be much more creative. So don't waste your space. So if you've got, um, say this is one for ceramics, use the top, always use the top shelves as a display area. This is a, obviously the pyramid dressing that we talked about, or you might use repetition, so you just use perhaps three vases or three or something, uh, pieces just grouped. So the top shelf is, is a dead area. So if you're looking through the shop, you think the top area, that's a great area to, to put displays in. And also it allows the customer to see where these pieces are. It kind of guides them through. So colour is really important. So how, um, for instance, these baskets here, if you put these against white or you have, say, white ceramics and you put white ceramics against uh, a white wall, it kind of drowns it. So it's good, to good practice to put colour behind your product to lift it. Um, the one here with the cushions, for example, if you've got that, a small area, um, you could actually texture the back wall as well because perhaps put a fine stripe in or something to in or endorse the actual um, design of the, um, of the cushions. And again, the ceramics at the end, look at the colour. Always look at study your merchandise to kind of bring it alive. Because so many times I see, especially bags, accessories, uh, lots of stores I see, their bag departments, they put all the bags against white walls and often it just washes them out. By putting colour behind, it adds value to the product as well. I always say in display, we have the ability to make the most expensive product look cheap and the most cheap look expensive through good dressing. So it's really important that you kind of get this right. So the other one is lighting. Lighting is really uh, very important. You might have lighting down the centre of your, your shop, hanging lighting, but you will also need, obviously, spotlights as well. Um, we used to have good practice is to, when you, in a window, you always work your lights on the cross. So if I'm standing here, the light would come crossways, not directly above me. So sometimes you get a piece of paper and put it across the light and take it away, it will just show where the beam is. Because at night time, obviously, when there's no one there, you might have spotlights not in the complete wrong direction. So the other thing I want to talk about is obviously like housekeeping as well. About, you know, the, the, uh, every morning, like, check your window, check your shop, make sure it's absolutely spotless. So all of these things kind of are all about, because you basically, with your pop-up shop, you're putting yourself on stage, if you like. You're actually exposing yourself to the public, and they are the most critical 
It's the same with a lot of our uh, exhibition stands here as well. You know, the ones that are really uh, have used colour or done something different, we notice. I'm sure a lot of you have walked around and really perhaps gone to a stand of it. Oh, that's so nice, the way it's presented. And people say, oh, no, the public don't notice. They do notice. We are very, we, and we need more. I mean, our high streets are, uh, I don't think they're in a very good condition at the moment because there's not enough, um, everyone thinks they can do it and they can't. If you really struggle, I'd suggest you go on a course. But uh, these two forms of dressing, say the pyramid and repetition will help you. And also with the pop-up, create interest. Some people say, oh, I'm just going to have white walls. But it depends on what you have. If you're an art gallery, you think, yes, okay, white. But even art sometimes needs a little bit of help, perhaps a little tone. If you go to the art galleries, they all, most of them have some tonal colour behind to, to lift those paintings. So when you open your pop-up shop, the big grand opening, again, this all comes as a big package. Think about what am I going to, what am I, how am I going to, uh, the invitations online. Think of something different. Or if you do have any kind of invitations, don't just give a kind of square piece of card. Think of something different. Because if I hand any of you a card, you'll just put it in your pocket. You don't really look at it. But if it's something different, a shape or cut or something, you're more liable to... Uh, to, to, to uh, take note of it. It's the same with the chocolates. Reese, we've all, you've got chocolate on your chocolates on your chair from before. We remember that because that's the given thing that we remember. And also think about even down to food. Um, I did a course and someone mentioned they were opening an art gallery and they were going to give tea and uh, tea and sandwiches from Marks and Spencers for their pop-up opening. See, that's not really representing fine art. So if you're opening a shop, say for instance, which is all um, I don't know, special organic creams. Think about, I'm going to do canapes on, li on, on rose petals or something like that. Something which people will go away and remember you. And that's the thing now. We're so bombarded with um, online things and we're so stimulated with so many things. But t attention to detail is the most important. It's what people remember and what they'll take away with them. So now I'm going to ask if there's any questions. I want to... Thank you, um, and I think probably you'll have quite a lot of um, questions to ask, hopefully. Um.